we want to talk about something that really touches all of our lives. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. Uh, please listen to this message. Uh, take it to heart. Uh, may you be encouraged uh, by this message um, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed and not offended. That's a, a hard uh, line to, to stay on, to stay blessed and not offended. Because people... Uh, say things uh, to, to, to us all the time that if we take it seriously, it's going to be an offense. It's going to hurt us. The people say uh, things that are intended to hurt us. And sometimes they say things that hurt us that, that are not intended to, but yet it hurt, hurts us anyway. So this, this is basically what I want to talk about tonight is staying blessed and not being offended or not taking an offense, uh, not taking a hurt, uh, letting it come inside. So, you know, the, the shield of faith uh, stops the fiery darts. And so there are all kinds mm -hmm. of fiery darts that are coming. And some of them are coming uh, from the devil that are just coming into your mind right. and, and different thoughts in your flesh. There are going to be things that come up from your flesh. So there's a lot of things uh, that, uh, that can offend you. And even uh, your closest friends and your family can say things to offend you. And certainly carnal people will say carnal things because that's what they know to do. Mm -hmm. Carnal people will do carnal things. And carnal things are the kinds of things that hit you and hurt you. Uh, and so we are not supposed to take an offense. Uh, Jesus said, uh, blessed are those who are not offended. Now, he said not offended in me, but uh, I believe it applies to any offense because an offense is going to hold you in the past. Okay, so somebody comes along mm -hmm. and, and they do something and, and, and it hurts you. And then tomorrow, then that's in the past. And, and then the next day, it's in the past and you, you keep going forward. And you're, if you have an offense, if you take an offense, if you take a hurt and you take it inside of you and you keep thinking about it and let it uh, impact you, it's going to uh, impact your very perspective on things. And, and you might say, mm -hmm. well, uh, there comes that person down the sidewalk uh, who hurt me. And so I'm going to cross the street and, and go down the sidewalk away from that person. I'm not going to uh, say anything to that person. See, that was something that happened in the past, and you're letting the past uh, color your perspective or influence your perspective on the present. Mm -hmm. And if you are being tied to the past, you have little influence on the present. Ooh, and so it's important for us to not be dragging around these burdens from the past. Okay, so let's look at the exact example there. And when Jesus came on the scene in Luke 4, 18, and I'm just going to keep this verse brief. He said, I, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me and he has anointed him for many things. He, he gave his assignments, but one of them was to set the captives free. Amen. Set the captives free. And uh, just a few, well, 40 days earlier than that, uh, John had seen Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And, and so Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River, and, and he went up and he was driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted, but he overcame every temptation. And so that gives us uh, the model that we can overcome temptations. We can overcome every temptation. When we're led by the Spirit of God, we can overcome. And he also said, pray that you enter not into temptation. So when we're praying, we're being led by the Spirit. We don't have to give way to the temptations. We can overcome those temptations. Okay, so after that 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus said, I have come to set the captives free. 
And John was a big supporter of, mm -hmm. of Jesus, Amen. and he he prepared the way for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they were they were uh, cousins, and so they were close. And and John was really the most powerful com contemporary minister uh, in Jesus's time. He was he was very aware of of John uh, the Bab of John the Baptist. And, and if you think about it. John the Baptist was the son of a high priest who was in there ministering in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was Zechariah. And he was a, a, a son of the high priest. Now that should have made him the high priest of Israel over that time. So uh, in a very uh, prestigious position, but the Roman uh, government came in, an army, and they, they turned things upside down and, and they put their own uh, people in charge, and uh, so it didn't continue down the line that uh, that Moses had sent, and God had set through Moses. So uh, John, but the people looked to John the mm -hmm. Baptist mm -hmm. as being a very influential person, and so you had the high priest up in Jerusalem. But when John the Baptist went out into the uh, wilderness, the people followed him, wanted to know what he had to say, and what he said was, "Repent." For the kingdom, kingdom of God, God is at hand. hand. And so uh, what did he mean by that? He said, change, repent is a change of way of thinking. And, and so we have, to, we have to change to think about the kingdom, for the kingdom is at hand. And so Jesus then said, I have come to set the captives free. Now, John the Baptist was out there preaching, and he had a lot of wisdom from God. He was preparing the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was preparing his way, and uh, what we see is that uh, he was stirring up people. He was getting them stirred up. They wanted to know what God was saying, and, and this bothered the king, and so the king had him arrested eventually because he was saying some things that the king didn't like and his wife didn't like, and so they arrested him, and so this is the very person that Jesus came to set free. Remember in Luke 4, 18, he said, I've come to set the captive free. And here's John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus. And now John the Baptist is a prisoner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he saw that Jesus was the son of God, the Christ, the lamb mm -hmm. of God. And, and he, was, he had come to set the people free. And so after a while, well, he didn't get free. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist still in prison. So he sent some uh, disciples out to Jesus and said, are you the one that we're looking for or, or do we look for another? One. Now, you think about who Jesus was. He is led by the spirit of God. He's immersed in the spirit and he's going to give John the Baptist the perfect. Perfect answer. The perfect answer for the question. And this is the same question and answer that, that we often deal with. And, and when we have the kinds of questions that, that uh, John the Baptist had, the perfect answer is this. This is what Jesus said to John the Baptist. And it still applies today. So if we're wondering if, who he is, if he's the one we've been looking for, this is his response. He said, go tell John that the blind receive sight. Hallelujah. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, Hallelujah. the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached preach to, to them. That's an interesting response. Are you the one? Are you the Christ? Are you the one we've been looking for? And, and, uh, and, and he gave them, he, those uh, followers of John, this answer, it would, it's the perfect answer, and it's the present tense. It's not about mm -hmm. past tense. It's not about future tense. Something may happen. And so in the year, uh, about 2,000 years ago, this is the answer. The blind see. Hallelujah. It, it's not the blind saw when he walked on the earth. Mm -hmm. The answer Hallelujah. is the blind see. see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, uh, the, the, deaf, dead are, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, raised, and the poor have the gospel, gospel preached, preached to them. them. That's the answer. So if you have any if you have any questions about Jesus, 
That's the perfect answer. Now, what does it mean? It means Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. He is the answer today. Whatever your problem is, Jesus is the answer Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Now, when we are born again, when we first come to the Lord, then we have a canvas that is uh, completely empty, and we can do anything, and God can do anything for us. And then over time, over time, uh, we have experiences, and, and people say, well, no, God doesn't do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, he may have done some things. He may have healed and, and uh, may have uh, raised the dead then, but he doesn't do it. Okay, now we begin to take offenses. And some of the times we pray, we don't get our prayers answered. And, and so we take offenses by that. And I, I like to look at it by considering the word fences. And so we fence out <clears throat> certain areas of that canvas. <clears throat> so we had a canvas. No, it's okay. We had a canvas that was completely empty. We could do anything. Any, anything was possible. Uh, everything is possible to the believer. Everything, all potentiality, all possibilities, it's all there. But as we begin to take offenses, as we uh, have faced disappointments, then we mm -hmm. begin to fence off part of that canvas and say, well, I can't go there anymore. I, I, I don't, I, I have doubts about that. I have doubts about that. And, and so the realm then of, uh, of what is possible to us begins to shrink over time. When we first begin to know Jesus, oh, we have so many, mm -hmm. many possibilities. Mm -hmm. But as we have experiences and we uh, find disappointments and hurts, then we begin to fence ourselves into a smaller and smaller area. Mm -hmm. And because of those offenses and those hurts and disappointments, and, and we begin to limit God. That's basically what it's doing. It's limiting God. Uh, but we see a smaller picture of God. We see a, a smaller God if we have offenses. But see, he said, blessed are those mm -hmm. who do not take offenses. Offense. Keep that canvas clean. Now, not only does, this, does your canvas need to be clean, and that's about the possibilities and potentialities you have, it needs to just be clean and, and you don't need to put any limitations on God. But not only that, as you learn more about God, then that canvas ought to grow and grow and get bigger and bigger. Hallelujah. And the fences go away. And the fences go away. So you still have a, a, a canvas that's full of possibilities. Anything is possible to those who believe. See, this is about believing. Now, the thing, the thing about believing is believing is in the heart. Remember Romans, or, or the book of Romans where it uh, talks about salvation. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your yeah. mouth that Jesus is Lord, uh, then you will be saved. Okay, so let's think about that for a minute. How do you get believing in your heart? How do you get faith? Faith, it doesn't come from striving for it because it's in the heart. And you can't, <clears throat> you can't decide that you're going to have more faith, and so you have more faith. No, what you do, see, you're not controlling what's in your heart uh, directly. It, you're changing the way you think. Remember? Right, right. Repent. Yeah. Change the way you think. Renew the mind. And renew the mind. And as you renew the mind, God puts changes your faith level he changes what's in your heart so you, the thing you have to work with i mean how many people can reach into your spirit and touch your spirit and stretch out your spirit and make it bigger and make it uh, no you can't do that hmm. what you can do is to renew your mind fill fill yourself with the scriptures but get the scriptures Revelation knowledge of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, pray that the spirit of revelation will uh, reveal the scriptures Amen. to you. Let them come Amen. alive. And as you're doing that, you're focusing on the things you can control and that you have influence over. And then that will show up in your heart as more faith. So you renew your mind and God 
builds your faith in your spirit man hallelujah you, you can't stretch your spirit man you can't stretch your faith uh directly it, it's well, he's the one that enlarges your heart he enlarges your heart and and he's the one that builds up your faith but when you're doing the right thing when, when you're seeking righteousness when you're seeking the kingdom and, and so let's don't take these offenses now, and if you've prayed for something and it hasn't come to pass, don't take an offense and say, well, God doesn't answer that kind of prayer anymore. And, and a lot of us are going to face mm -hmm. uh, difficulties and we're going to even see loved ones uh, pass away. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all experienced the loved ones uh, passing right. away. And, and, and there are some of those that we pray for and we prayed for it and, and, they, and they weren't healed. And so well, then we begin to uh, say, well, maybe God doesn't heal anymore. Yeah, well, and I want to give you an example of this. So we were in a congregation and really involved. I, I was teaching the, um, the adults in it. And uh, we were involved in different aspects of that ministry. And, and one day, uh, the preacher got up and, and Sherry and I were sitting on the front row. And the preacher got up and, and basically, what he was saying is that God didn't heal anymore. Now, the reason he said that was because his wife had died mm -hmm. and he was justifying himself Yes, and, and yes. putting God in a box and saying, well, God doesn't heal anymore. You can't depend on God to heal. What, what he did, he, he just took his big canvas. He took that big canvas and he squeezed it down. That was the possibilities that God could do. That was the possibilities mm -hmm. and potentialities. And he squeezed it down and said, well, God doesn't heal anymore. Now, uh, we may have said this to you before, but it's an interesting experience. I want Sherry to tell you again what happened to her that day when the preacher said that the God doesn't heal. Well, this was about a year after uh, I'd had my surgery for, and the, there was no cancer in my body. And God had uh, performed a miracle in my body. And I received that and mm -hmm. I and I began to declare that. And and so we were sitting there and he began to minister and 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 talk about you know God not healing uh, everyone and and you just have to accept what what he is doing and and I I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me. Uh, get up and you no. Know, what did he say? Leave or die. Leave or die. Leave or die. That's what he spoke to me. You see, the the some of the same symptoms were trying to come back on my body, and and the the spirit of the Lord was was protecting me, and so I kept sitting there. And the second time, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, "Leave or die." And the third time, it took him three times to speak to me before I obeyed what the Spirit of the Lord was saying to me. He said, leave or die. I was not to hear what was coming forth. I was not to hear any doubt or unbelief because it was going to shrink my capacity uh, to believe the Lord. And so I just reached over and told Freddie that I had to leave. So. You can, okay, and so, so we had three small children at that point in time, and she just got up and got in the car and left. And here I am with three <laughs> small children way out in the way out in the boonies, and, and uh, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew she where she was going, and, and we just can't listen to that. So most doctrines that come in and restrict and say well god doesn't do this and god doesn't do that god doesn't heal god doesn't baptize you in the holy ghost god, there's no more speaking in tongues there's, there's no, no more, more miracles pros no prosperity no, no prosperity no, okay if they say any of those things they're justifying themselves and it comes out of their disappointments and so they take an offense against god and, and they begin to build doctrines that are contrary to the word of God. I mean, the word of God says all things are possible. Hallelujah. Believe. believe. All things are possible. So you should. Amen. So in your canvas of what's possible and your potentiality ought to be from completely clear 
of all fences, of all obstacles, because God can do anything. And, and what, what uh, John the Baptist was dealing with, he was in prison, and yet Jesus said, I've come to set the captives free. And, and so what Jesus said to him was the perfect answer. If you have any doubts about anything, healing is still going on. And Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And if he ever healed one person, he will heal you. Hallelujah. If he ever prospered one person, he will prosper you. Amen. Because he shows no partiality and no respect of persons. Uh, what he does for one, he will do for all. Amen. And what he did in one point in time, he will do today. Hallelujah. Be because that verse said the blind see. see. It, it's, it didn't say, oh, the blind saw 2,000 years ago. Ago. It didn't say, oh, the blind will see in 2,000 years from now. It says the blind see today. Hallelujah. The, the lame walk today. The lepers are cleansed today. Hey, hallelujah. The, the, the deaf, dead are hear, raised. The deaf hear. <laughs> the, the deaf comes first. The deaf hear today. The dead, dead are raised, raised today. Up. Hallelujah. The poor have the gospel preached preach to, to them, them today. Hallelujah. It's all about today. And it's not about a set period of time that something good happened, but it doesn't happen anymore. Just because people... Uh, have disappointments you cannot build a doctrine around a disappointment oh, and, and uh, mm. try to say well this is well, something that god doesn't do because god does everything all things. and he does all things, things well, well. hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah he does all things, things well. well that's pretty exciting yeah. to know that yeah. our god does all things well now what is it about <laughs> an offense well, it's because somebody comes and uh, hurts you. If you take an offense, any kind of an offense, and uh, we've told the story about uh, Sherry taking an offense against my dad, and it changed her perspective. It changed her perspective about me. So when I talked and I, I sounded like him, she got mad at me. Mm -hmm. When I walked and I, I walked like him, she got mad at me. See, it affects her perspective. If you take uh, any kind, any kind of offense, it will change your perspective on things. You'll see things differently and you can't operate like that and be free. Now, John the Baptist was in, was in prison, but Jesus gave him the perfect answer that was going to free him. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. It was a seed. It was a the seed. seed. It was the word of God and the word of God is a seed. seed. And so it was the seed that it was going to produce life in him. It was going to produce freedom in John. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's just think about uh, offenses in general. Now, if you work with it, uh, any group of people, uh, it's hard not to take on the offenses mm -hmm. of the people that mm -hmm. do something against those. And let me give you some examples. Joy, for example, has worked uh, at, for years in schools with uh, students. And so as a, as a teacher and an administrator, it she sees lots of children being uh, being uh, abandoned, being neglected, being abused. Uh, abused. And, and so it's hard for her not to take on an offense against the parents that would abandon a child or neglect a child or abuse a child. But you've got to keep your heart clear yeah and, and guard your heart and guard your heart and and uh, if you're working for some people uh working for a company or working uh someplace then then it's uh, the people around you and the colleagues around you they they see the the clients that you deal with and and how rude they are and it, it's hard not to take an offense against the clients and it's hard uh not to take an offense against the employer and the administrators because you, you you get to be with the one group of people and it's hard not to take an offense against uh, the other people. Uh, and, and for example, uh, you might be in one political party and, and, and you think and what you're hearing uh, is re reinforcing what you're thinking. And then the other political party is saying something different. It's hard not to take an offense, but what are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be blessed 
if you don't take an offense against the Republicans. And you'll be blessed if you don't take an offense against the Democrats. And you, you'll, you'll be, be blessed, blessed if you don't take an offense against the rich. And you'll be blessed yes. if you don't take an offense uh, uh, against uh, the poor. And you, yes. you'll be blessed and you'll be blessed if you're not taking offenses. Because if you take a, the, an offense, it's going to be some burdens on your back that you're going to carry. And it, it comes out of the past, but you carry them into the future and you carry them into today. And those offenses are heavy and, and we're not supposed to carry uh, offenses. We're, we're not built uh, to carry offenses. Uh, if, if we were, they'd call us a mule, but we're human, <laughs> but we're spirits and, and we're not supposed to be carrying those kinds of I burdens can. and the only way that we keep from carrying those burdens is to lay it all at the feet of Jesus we're supposed to be free and and the thing that sets you free the perfect answer is to set you free is to say that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed uh the the deaf hear the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel that's Jesus and he's always the same Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Be blessed and don't let your parents uh, uh, take an uh, don't take an offense against your parents and don't take an offense against your siblings and don't take uh, uh, an offense against your children because you'll be blessed. Amen. You, you'll Amen. be free from those burdens. And, and, and John couldn't see it. But Jesus gave him the perfect answer, and it's the perfect answer for you and me today. When you have any question and, and think about, well, well, God, are you going to do this? Or God, will you do that? And well, why didn't I get that prayer? Remember the thing that will keep you free. The perfect answer is this, the blind see, the lame walk, oh. the deaf hear, uh, the le leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Hallelujah.